Today's video is all about really if we can use the iPad as a replacement for a laptop, which uh, is something I've wanted to test out for a while. I've really regretted buying a MacBook Pro uh, a long time ago because it's too heavy and too bulky. And I'm really, really interested to see if I can actually use an iPad uh, as my daily driver, my you know, emails and browsing and social media and all that kind of stuff, because I just don't need a MacBook Pro. I actually really regret selling my MacBook Air. So we are here in Milan, Italy. And this is my view. Uh, we're here with OnePlus. They've invited us to a product launch event which is happening tomorrow. However, today we are going on a lovely vineyard tour which we're gonna bring you along for. And this week, I really wanted to see if I could actually switch to, if you wanna call it that, but I actually wanna use the iPad Pro as my main device because loads of the stuff I use, I don't need a big laptop. So I really think this could be a good thing to potentially try out. Let's bring you along with us. Okay, so we are hanging out with OnePlus today at uh, their uh, uh, Italian vineyard uh, in Italy, in Milan. And we're hanging out to see their launch of their new mid-range series of phones, tablets, buds, and watches, which we're gonna be at tomorrow. But uh, for today, we're enjoying some lovely food, some lovely wine. For now, just enjoy the lovely sights of Italy and just like what an incredible job this is. This is just like, I love it. <laughs> I love YouTube. Starting with writing the outline for this video using Google Docs. Now I've actually written a list of things I want to try out within Apple Notes. So I'm able to use the iPad in split screen mode to flesh out my thoughts into more detail as I go through this list. Also, I'm using the Magic Keyboard. Feels really good here, like no issues at all with typing. It's a little smaller than the full size keyboard on the MacBook Pro, but yeah, definitely not causing me any issues whilst typing. I see like try and straighten out and then it's less but as soon as you do that you can also use the ipad as a remote monitor for my sony camera which is like really really handy when trying to set up these types of shots myself with you know without someone helping me so my wife has just messaged me saying there are some problems with like the home media server thing so i normally use team viewer to remote into my home mac so i can jump on and actually fix things at home now i have recently been using an app called duet because team has just been giving me a black screen every time i try and use it however as typical, today I try and use Duet and it's not working and TeamViewer is. So yeah, jumping in with TeamViewer, it's really useful. So I've got a Mac Mini at home as my like home media server thing. And I can use one of various remote tools to connect in and actually fix things from my iPad. Uploading the footage to Google Drive though. Most people would be okay here since you can copy files to your own personal drive, but since we store all of our footage in this shared drive so my editor can access these, I then have to go into the Google Drive app to move the files from the personal drive to the shared drive because you can only upload to your personal drive. So uh, Zoom calls also work fine. We actually tend to do a lot of our like video calls on Slack because we use Slack to like message the team. Um, I thought there would be a problem with like screen sharing whilst also doing a video call on the iPad because it would then, you know, gray out the, the camera or something. But actually, like, it works fine. Like when you go screen share on an iPad, it still has both cameras there. So you can still see them at their end. You can still see you and you can share your screen. It, it works so, so well. Uh, so yeah, generally speaking, no issues at all with like meetings or Zoom calls on an iPad. Of course, an iPad wouldn't be an iPad without note taking. And whether you are someone who types in your notes with the keyboard, honestly, that's probably what I do most of the time. Or if you use an Apple Pencil to scribble notes. Now, at least the new iOS 18 update will hopefully make my uh, childlike handwriting look at least semi-legible here. Now, what I have tended to use the pencil for is to actually annotate documents. So like for the governor's meeting that I'm meant to be at 
like now, um, I can open the documents and circle and underline and make notes using the pencil. That is so convenient. So when I'm in the meeting, I can just pull up my notes from each document really, really quickly. And of course, if you are a regular user of the Apple Pencil, then the sponsor of today's video is like the, the perfect thing for uh, you to get. Or if not for you, it makes for a brilliant gift for a friend of yours with an iPad. So if you do want to have that paper-like feeling, just buy the paper-like screen protector who coincidentally are sponsoring this video, thank you very much, at a fraction of the cost of upgrading to this new nano texture coating option. And it's something I featured for years and years across this channel. It's a bit of a viewer favorite. Now, rather than it being etched directly into the glass like the nano texture display and available on only the more expensive iPad Pros, the Paperlike 2.1 is a screen protector that also doubles up by making that kind of glassy, smooth screen feel way more, well, like paper. So when using any Apple Pencil, on any iPad, it will feel a lot more like drawing or writing on real paper. And actually it sounds similar too. Now this isn't the same as the new iPad nano texture. It actually uses their painted nanodots technology to make it what it is. But for a avid note taker or an artist, Paperlike is the only way to make your iPad feel more enjoyable to use. It's also affordable and also available across all sizes and all iPads. And the best thing of all is that Paperlike has a 100 day satisfaction guarantee. So if you don't like it, or if you mess up fitting both of the included screen protectors in each pack, you can get a free replacement or a complete refund. So to give it a try, grab one using the link down below this video. And if you've used one before, why not just comment down below with your own experience to see what other people think as well. Okay, so back to work now. Now I've been using uh, Missive as my email client for the last maybe 12 months or so. And it's essentially, it sits on top of Gmail. So you're still using Gmail underneath it, but Missive gives you all these kind of extra features that I need for um, kind of my team that I work with. Now I've been able to bang out a very quick email to my children's school governors because I'm meant to be at a governor's meeting uh, in a few hours in the UK and instead I'm somewhere else which is maybe much nicer and much more fun than a governor's meeting. So um, watch me as I craft my uh, explanation email as to why I am not able to make the meeting. Oh, using Missive, actually it's really easy to stay on top of day-to-day -day emails, I don't have any issues. Um, obviously with emails it's also on my phone and my iPad and my laptop, so wherever I, you know, whatever device I'm using, I can get to it. Um, what the iPad does open up for you though, is that you can obviously put a data SIM in the iPad, so you have always, like, always on access, whereas laptops don't typically have a data SIM or, the, you know, accessible internet all the time. You have to hotspot or Wi-Fi or whatever it's gonna be. So well, I don't have that on this iPad, I'm just Wi-Fi'd, you know, hotspot off my um, iPhone right now, but it does open up the ability to just being able to, you know, always have access to everything like all the time on your iPad with a data sim. Now this will be a bit unusual, but on my MacBook, it is really handy to kind of manage and set up all of the home automation stuff. Like on the Mac, it's mostly around the Apple Home app and that comes across to the iPad super nicely. I can still see my kids on the camera. I can still dim the lights late at night and still even remotely open the garage if I want to like open the door for any deliveries that need tucking away whilst I'm away. Now. Does the M4 iPad Pro matter? No, absolutely not in terms of the chipset. Like this feels like the same performance as my like M1 iPad Pro that was you know, four years ago now. So I think genuinely, if you are considering switching to like an iPad instead of a laptop, then you can likely either buy an older generation iPad or even try one of the base model iPads with like the A series chips. There is just, in my opinion, absolutely no reason at all to have all of that power in an iPad. Not unless actual does eventually get round to bringing like the full OS, like Mac OS to the iPad. Otherwise they literally might as well throw in, you know, an M4 chip into the next iPhone because it is kind of pointless in my opinion, other than like a few, like a really, really small segment of the market that, that can actually use the M4 chip. Now you can't make use of all that desktop class performance for most people. Speaking of desktop class performance or rather not, is that any iPad is gonna be great for entertainment. And of course, it's something I do use my laptop for, especially when I'm traveling. I usually like pre-download a ton of films or TV shows before I travel. So I have something to watch on the plane or in the hotel room. I'm actually watching uh, Presumed Innocent. I just finished watching Dark Matter, both like super great shows. And I also just finished off Clarkson's Farm on Prime Video and even on YouTube. I actually end up downloading longer form like podcasts to kind of semi-watch, but mostly listen to in the background. 
performance. Now this is where the OLED screen quality and the smaller size of the iPad works just so much better. Either handheld or actually I just tend to prop it up using the Magic Keyboard stand which works you know, most of the time. The only issue is you can get a little bit top heavy when you rotate the screen all the way back and you're trying to balance it on your knees or on a couch or on a bed or something like that. So yeah, just getting the position right can be a bit difficult sometimes. It's also great for things like Duolingo, which can now nag me on my phone and my tablet. But it is nice to be able to hop in to do like a few lessons each day and then get back to like the regular other things you should be doing on your, your laptop cam kind of iPad side of things. Now something I wouldn't use my laptop for but would usually you know, end up bringing a separate device for is reading books. And since this is an iPad, it kind of makes a fantastic device to read books on too. Now, of course, you don't have like multiple months battery life like you do on something like a Kindle. But like I just said, it saves you taking yet another device with you. So it is nice to have all of these features available to you in that one device. Social media has been pretty good to use with the iPad as well. It is a shame there is not a desktop app version of Instagram, but, but generally speaking, I don't really use Instagram on my laptop anyway, just approaching this from like a replacing my laptop situation. Although you do have to use uh, X, you have to remember that it's called X on the iPad. You can't open Twitter anymore. You have to literally search for X. Very, very annoying. Now, one thing I did think would be a bit of a sticking point are one of these uh, YubiKeys, which is like, a physical security key that I have to physically plug in and then touch the contact sensor to sign into various apps. But again, iPads, no issues whatsoever. Just plug it in, touch the contact sensor, super easy to use and no better or no worse than using it on a, like a, a proper laptop. So yeah, there's no problems at all. And then of course there is the more obvious ones. Ticking things off on my to-do list, FaceTiming with the kids, especially whilst I'm away traveling, just to have that bigger screen with a camera that's now in the right place, might I add. Okay, so this is a bit more unusual, but I've been thinking of getting a tattoo for like the last like 20 years or something. And uh, my daughter put a um, little transfer tattoo here and I've now kind of quite like the idea. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna get one, but I'm trying to use ChatGPT to come up with a design of like a general design of what to have. And like results are pretty cool. Like it's quite cool to get like from nothing to a full design within like a few seconds. But it's like, AI is really bad sometimes. Like we're just trying to do it right now. And literally I said like, can you create me a fresh design with these words on it? And it literally created a design with the word fresh on the design, <laughs> it was really stupid. Um, so yeah, that aside, like I think like having chat GPT on the iPad, obviously you've got it on the Mac and every phone and all the other stuff as well. Um, it's pretty great. So um, yeah, if you want to see my first tattoo, then um, subscribe and you can see me go through that. It'd be great fun. have you a full ecosystem of devices, the phone, earbuds, the tablet, and the watch. Four products designed with you in mind. All right, that was the, uh, that was the launch of OnePlus. Stage here, finished. They've just launched the, the buds, the watch, the phone, and the tablet. Uh, really cool products. This was like a much bigger launch than I was expecting, but uh, super, super appreciative of uh, OnePlus for inviting us out here. It's been such an incredible experience at, uh, in Milan, in Italy. It's been uh, yeah, one of the best experiences I've had so far. So huge thank you to OnePlus and uh, go check out some of the new products. Cheers. So can you use an iPad to replace a laptop? Actually, yes. For some people, yes, you can.